September 11th, 10 years ago, this coming Sunday, an event openly used to launch illegal criminal wars to frame innocent countries like Iraq and kill over a million of their people. Of course, it was an inside job. The lies about yellow cake and uranium were an inside job. The lies that get us into Vietnam was a staged false flag inside job. Hitler firebombing his own Capitol building to get martial law powers was an inside job. Inside jobs have been used by every major government and every major empire in history when they become corrupt. The U.S. government openly went to Kennedy and said we want to blow up jetliners, bomb D.C. and Miami, and blame it on foreign governments to start World War III, basically. And we even know how to frame patsies. Kennedy said no. We're looking at September 11th tonight. Ten years later, we've got Richard Gage joining us later from Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. We have an incredible report that Aaron Dykes has worked on for a week looking at the smoking guns of 9-11 and false flag terror 10 years later. Amazing. And then Darren McBreen out on the streets of Austin, Texas, showing people video of Building 7 collapsing. You're going to be amazed by what they have to say. That report is coming up as well. It is September 9th. 2011, we're just two days short of 10 years since this catalyzing new Pearl Harbor event that Dick Cheney wrote about. He said in PNAC in 2000, we need a big giant terror attack that kills at least 3,000 people, like Pearl Harbor, it killed 3,000 as well, to be able to launch all these wars and take over Afghanistan and other areas. And they did it. They did it. They did it, and they hope you're naive, and they hope you're too afraid to face the facts so they can continue, 10 years later, to rebrand Al-Qaeda away from foreign brown-skinned threats that they sold through racism to the new rollout where they're saying militias, gun owners, tea partiers, white Al-Qaeda. That's in the news. They say, white Al-Qaeda. What's white Al-Qaeda? Anybody that doesn't want to give in to the foreign banking takeover, which again is a form of balkanization to make people who aren't white feel like, well, I can't be against the foreign banks. I can't be against the wars. That's white Al-Qaeda. Just incredible information. That's my opening commentary on this because we're teleprompter free news. It's from the heart. It's from research. It's from decades and decades of work that we bring you InfoWars nightly news. Now, before we get into 9-11, I want to look at some of the aftermath. Um, before we look at the crime of 9-11, some of the aftermath associated with it. First off, not just in New York, but all over the country, we are seeing checkpoints being set up. And they tell us, oh, it's a special event. Uh, because 9-11 uh, is coming, we're going to have checkpoints on the highways and we're going to search you without a warrant. There's no Fourth Amendment because of a special event. Just like under federal grants, they say, oh, we're going to have a no refusal weekend where we take blood at checkpoints from you, violating your Fourth Amendment under federal grants. Now they're announcing it's just 24-7, 365. So that's how they start it. Only sometimes is the Fourth Amendment suspended because the tyrants say so. And only sometimes do we have checkpoints. You see, that's how it's working. And so they are running around saying bag searches, checkpoints in New York amid threat. And they're pulling over taxi drivers, trucks, citizens, searching people's person. Tens of thousands of people a year now in New York. They make you line up and frisk you. Just absolutely incredible. Worse than North Korea. Worse than third world countries I've been to in Central America. Continuing, though, where's the real terror threat? I noticed on the holiday uh, a few days ago, on Monday, I noticed that they announced in Phoenix that the police had tried to smuggle plastic explosives through security, real explosives, and onto a plane. But then somehow someone stole the explosives, and they were found on the street, a few days later out on a highway. It wasn't about Labor Day or the week leading up to 
This was a typical exercise we do. In fact, we do hundreds of them throughout the year. It was normal for us, acting Phoenix police chief said. Isn't that just special? And you read deeper into the article, it was live explosives. Why would you use that in a drill? Well, on the 7-7 bombings in England, they had a drill of the exact same bus and trains being attacked at the exact same time and location. The exact same trains and exact same bus at the exact same time at the exact same location. BBC reported that. They're very proud of it. So did other TV stations over there. Think about that. They use these drills as the cover to stage attacks. And that way if the feds or their minions get caught staging an event, they just say, oh, it was part of a drill. Just like Putin's people did in 99 at the fourth apartment building with the FSB, their new KGB caught planting bombs. They told cops it's part of a drill, flash their badges, scot-free. They want to stage terror attacks to sell their whole police state takeover of this country. Now, finally, in news, Prince Charles warns of six extinction event. And he says that humans are you know, basically so terrible and so horrible that we're going to cause our own extinction because we're hurting the earth. This is a guy that openly tells old women in England not to take hot baths because of their carbon footprint. And he has two private trains, more than 20 private aircraft, hundreds of uh, private automobiles, and he himself has more than 16 giant palaces, some of which have over 500 rooms. Uh, just like Al Gore has a bunch of big uh, fancy houses and Lord Rothschild. But he wants you to pay him and Lord Rothschild a carbon tax on breathing, on all human activity. And basically the globalists are just getting us ready for the mass plagues they're going to release and their bioweapons attacks that his father called for. He said he wants to re basically release a virus to kill 80% of the world's population. You can actually look up um, Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, uh, says he wants to kill 80%. You'll get all his public statements in Reuters and books he's written. It, it's, it's a constant theme. So they're just getting you ready for all the disasters and things they're engineering to say, oh, this happened because there were too many of you. We need some of you to die so we can have more palaces. Uh, so just amazing information from Prince Charles uh, says that the extinction is about to begin, and we know the globalists are getting their bunkers and things ready uh, so they can launch more and more terror attacks upon us and then pose as the saviors. Now, going to this absolutely amazing report uh, that's a week in the making and 10 years of uh, research, actually more than 10 years. You know, I did say they were going to blow up the World Trade Center and blame it on bin Laden um, two months before 9-11. Uh, I said they blame it on their assets. So I guess two years, uh, uh, 10 years and uh, two months in the making uh, is this special report coming up. And then man on the street watching Building 7 collapse. Here is Aaron Dyke's uh, report. Please get it out to everyone you know. Ten years later, Americans are still struggling with how to remember 9-11. Those patriotic feelings that swelled up in so many after the attacks simply no longer match the world that's grown up around us. Homeland Security, empowered to fight terrorism, has instead been turned against the American people, targeting returning veterans, Tea Partiers, Constitutionalists, Federal Reserve activists, and more. The TSA has eviscerated the Fourth Amendment and become increasingly invasive and controversial. Lies, lies, and more lies about WMDs, banker bailouts, and more, as well as perpetual wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, have proven that governments will deceive to get what they want. And now the fact that NATO forces are fighting alongside Al-Qaeda in Libya only serves to undermine the official story. But that official story has never messed with the laws of physics and common sense, and those who would prop up that story for their own agenda have long been at odds with the family members, the rescue workers, and concerned citizens who only want truth and justice. In the years of research, there have been more than 300 smoking guns which blow apart the official story. But in the interest of time, we're going to cover just a few of the most important. The 9-11 Commission itself was one of the biggest smoking guns surrounding the attacks and the subsequent cover-up. Six of the ten Commission members stated their disappointment with the conditions and their doubt about the conclusions. Co-Chair Lee Hamilton, who admitted they were set up to fail, Bob Carey, who said there was ample reason to suspect there was an alternative to what was outlined in the version. Timothy Romer said, we were extremely frustrated with the false statements we were getting. John Lehman said we purposefully put together a staff that had in a way 
conflicts of interest. And 9-11 Commissioner Max Cleland resigned after concluding that it was, quote, a national scandal and that the investigation was compromised. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. And senior counsel to the 9-11 Commission, John Farmer, wrote an entire book saying how he was shocked at how different the truth was from the way it was described and that the tapes told a radically different story from what had been told to the public. The 9-11 Commission was nothing more than a whitewash used for political ends. The investigation was heavily compromised and steered through Philip Zelikow, who had close White House ties and limited access to witness and other documents. And the implications of what was omitted from the official story are as damning as they are compelling. Building 7 was the most blatant omission from the 9-11 Commission report of all. It wasn't hit by a plane, yet it had a symmetrical collapse and fell at nearly the speed of gravity. Statements made about Building 7's collapse on television that day and shortly after made clear what had happened. Building 7 ablaze at the moment and apparently getting ready to collapse. The excitement and the fun that people get watching an old building being demolished. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed. We don't even know whether this was... Uh, something that was uh, engineered for safety reasons or it just happened. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull and then we watched the building collapse. Emergency responders and firefighters were told the building was going to collapse. You hear that? Keep your eye on that building. It'll be coming down. The building is about to blow up. Move it back. All right, guys. We are walking back. The building is about to blow up. All flame. Debris coming down. And early reporting was the tell. BBC World had reported that Building 7 had completely collapsed over 20 minutes before its actual implosion. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago, I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. It then emerged that Aaron Brown of CNN reported from a rooftop overlooking Ground Zero that Building 7 had collapsed over an hour before it actually fell. We are getting information now that one of the other buildings, Building 7, in the World Trade Center complex is on fire and has either collapsed or is collapsing. And I, I, you, to be honest, can see these pictures a little bit more clearly than I. But the clincher is that NIST was unconfident in its own conclusion after years of delay in its report, finding only a, quote, low probability that the building fell due to fires. NIST refused to test for the theory of controlled demolition. The simplistic explanations of the cartoonish official story have been picked apart. More than 1,500 professional architects and engineers have put their reputations on the line, insisting that the laws of physics are not optional during a terrorist attack. Collapsing towers that couldn't have been brought down by jet fuel, evidence of demolition, testimony from police, firefighters, and other rescue workers who witnessed bombs that day were ignored by the 9-11 Commission. Video evidence showed molten steel, but NIST denied this. When you see molten steel, molten steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry, mm -hmm. yeah. like lava. Like but public sentiment has shifted. Whereas early polls in 2002 showed very few skeptics, uh, as the years moved along, there have been more and more who doubt the official story. In 2006, more than 80% of people were found questioning the 9-11 official account, and more than a third believed it was an inside job or that the U.S. government had a role in the actual attacks. Now, after 10 years, it's the government who has to prop up their own official account. The lies have simply worn thin. The people are now ready to hear the truth. It was elements within our own government working with the terrorists to bring down this country. We're here to make sure that the official story continues to collapse. We're here to expose the terrorists, the people that really carried out 9-11, the criminals inside the military-industrial complex. Clearly, our leaders have lied to us. But what really happened? Without knowing every detail, we understand that the official story was paper thin and made for the movie screen. It was more than just incompetence on prior warnings and ignored intelligence about the terrorist. No warning signs that I'm aware of. And it was a revelation that the White House had no intention of making public. President Bush was told in August that Osama bin Laden 
might be planning an attack involving the hijacking. could have predicted. Nobody in our government, at least. Uh, August 6th, uh, PDG. I believe the title was Bin Laden Determined to Attack Inside the United States. The entire national security structure was compromised. More than 20 drills and various federal and military agencies simulated scenarios that later paralleled the real attacks. NORAD stood down as the hijackers approached their targets the day of 9-11. Fighter planes, radar monitors, emergency response components, and other capacities were disabled by some 20 different drills going on throughout government on the day of 9-11. The left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, but somebody was operating the system. A shadow network connected the stand down. But if it was a conspiracy, why hasn't anybody talked? The truth is that the media refuses to address and honestly handle the admissions that have come forward. Intelligence officers testified about the scandals inside their terrorist monitoring programs. Able Danger, for instance, repeatedly linked Mohammed Atta and other al-Qaeda operatives to terrorist plots literally dozens of times. Yet these warnings and many others were totally ignored. FBI translator Sybil Edmonds broke her gag order to blow the whistle and wiretap she translated leading up to and including the day of September 11, proving that Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda were working for the U.S. government up until the day of 9-11. All our intimate relationship with bin Laden and, and Taliban, we did carry very intimate relationship with these people all the way up to September 11. Understanding the need for an external enemy, colored by propaganda and myth, to drive military intervention across the globe is key to understanding the motives behind 9-11. The Al-Qaeda network, with cells spread across the map, is comparable to a can opener for U.S. military invasion, exposing nation after nation to war, sanctions, or humanitarian intervention. National Security Advisor Zvignu Brzezinski trained these men to entrap the Soviets in Afghanistan, backed first secretly by the Carter administration. Later, the Reagan administration publicly hailed the freedom fighters, carrying out a protracted war that debilitated the enemy. Later, these men were reformed into the Pentagon client Al-Qaeda, to back NATO interest in the Balkan Wars. As the group was rebranded as an enemy, its iconic leader, Osama bin Laden, a billionaire whose family has heavy business ties with the West and whose code name was Tim Osman, became the new face of terror. The perceived menace of these radical groups spread out in nations across the Islamic world has contributed significantly to the pretext for invading, bombing, or going to war. Key bono, who benefits? History confirms false flags behind nearly every major war, from the Gulf of Tonkin, the USS Maine, babies thrown from incubators, WMD lies, and so much more. Many of our leaders burned around the potential that a false flag could provide for their foreign policy and domestic agenda. The Project for a New American Century, or PNAC, the neocon group that would soon fill much of the Bush administration, wrote in 2000, how a, quote, new Pearl Harbor could help them pursue their plan for a global American empire, noting that a catastrophic and catalyzing event would help move their agenda forward in a timely fashion. Brzezinski also wrote in his grand chessboard in 1997 how foreign policy had to be buoyed by widely perceived external threat. Then just days after 9-11, the Council on Foreign Relations met to openly discuss how the crisis could be used to build a, quote, new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster, and that is a new world order. Now in the Obama administration, we've heard about the next terror attack. We've seen advisors like Robert Shapiro hail the usefulness of an Oklahoma City or 9-11 style attack. Glenn Beck and Michael Savage both warn how the Obama administration could seize upon another terror attack to blame the right. The homeland security apparatus has been turned around on the people. Instead of pursuing suspected radical jihadists, outspoken Americans have been placed under suspicion, including returning vets, Tea Party activists, peaceful opponents of the Federal Reserve, and supporters of third-party candidates, among others. They've all been identified as potential domestic terrorists in law enforcement documents. And this has been reinforced by Homeland Security memos and its constant propaganda. Don't assume it was left by accident. If you see something, say something. Chuck Norris is only the most recent of many prominent citizens who become concerned about videos depicting white Americans, not Muslim radicals, as likely terrorists, cementing the notion that the police state was built for the people.
They've been conditioned for slavery by TSA pat-downs, body scans, and other invasive and unconstitutional searches of airline passengers. But now that's expanded into bus passengers and highway checkpoints. The system will never admit the truth that's plainly in front of us. It's simply too invested in the lie. But the truth will come out through tireless research and persistent efforts. It already has in so many thousands of documents filed through freedom of information requests and in the hundreds of professionals in media, government, military, and other areas who've blown the whistle on their part of the schemes. The truth about 9-11 has a dangerous parallel to the JFK assassination. Even as more and more of the truth came out and new investigations were done, including several within Congress itself, the government still stuck by the official lie established by the Warren Commission. And if we don't stand up now, the same thing's going to happen with this terrible and tragic event. Meanwhile, we must never stop seeking the truth and demanding answers. Eventually, we will win. I'm Aaron Dykes reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Alex, back to you. Great job, Aaron. And that's just a small portion of the smoking gun facts of 9-11. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And yeah, it's scary to stand up against these murderers. A lot of people say, well, if it's all true, why are you and Richard Gage and so many others still alive? Jesse Ventura. Because if they kill us, it underlines, it highlights, it underscores. Everything we've said and done, it makes us martyrs. No, they'd rather just call us tinfoil hat-wearing people because we know the true history. And now we see NATO working with Al-Qaeda and handing over Libya to them and billions of dollars and heat-seeking missiles. And in a couple of years, when they attack us or take the blame for an attack, I'll be on air saying, look, our government helped put them in power in Libya. And people will go, be quiet, conspiracy theorists. And I'll go, no, here's 50 news clips. Here's the articles. They'll just say, be quiet, un-American. And the biggest issue is they're now rebranding the threat of Al-Qaeda onto anybody that resists corruption. Anybody who is a true American and loves the Bill of Rights and Constitution. Now, Richard Gage is coming up. Uh, the head of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth to give us his take on 10 years later. But first, I want to go to this report filed by Rob Jacobson uh, behind the camera and Darren McBreen, our reporter, out on the street. We talked to quite a few people, and uh, Darren has told me that the, well, all of them but one, and that person could hardly talk, uh, said that it was a controlled demolition or looked suspicious. Here is this powerful report. Thank you, Alex. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. We're here at the University of Texas in Austin just days before the 10th anniversary of 9-11. And we're wondering how many people are aware that there was a third tower that fell, Building 7, which was not hit by a plane, but collapsed demolition style at 5.20 p.m., many hours after the first two towers fell. What are your thoughts when you see that? This was not hit by an airplane. It collapsed many hours after the first two towers fell. I mean, it sort of looks like a planned demolition, but it could also be a lot of other things. Oh, wow. Have you ever seen that video before? I have, actually. It was, um, this is weird, but it was one of those conspiracy videos I saw. But, yeah, I, I, it was pretty crazy, the video I saw. It just, like, dropped straight down. Have you ever seen the video before? Uh, not at that building, no. No. Do you find it interesting that it was not featured in the 9-11 Commission report? It wasn't featured at all? That is interesting. That is interesting. And it looked, uh, you know, it was a very controlled blast, it seemed. What are your thoughts when you see that building go down like that? Um, I don't really know what happened to it. I don't think anyone, like the government probably wouldn't tell us. I'm actually in the College of Architecture as a grad student and have seen several demolitions and it does look completely controlled. I mean, it, it looked like a controlled demolition. It didn't look like the uh, explosion happened from like one side like coming in or anything like that. It looked like it kind of happened from the bottom and just kind of imploded on itself. Um, Is as that if the there first was... time you've seen the video? Yes, definitely. That's the first time I've ever seen that, yeah. This is my first time actually hearing about Building 7. So, you know, that, that tells you how much they've covered it. But um, that's very weird. It really looks like a demolition implosion. I don't remember saying it at all. I remember watching both the second tower collapse live, and I don't remember hearing or seeing anything at the time about that. 
As most of the InfoWars audience is aware, World Trade Center leaseholder Larry Silverstein gave the okay to pull the building moments before Building 7 collapsed. BBC's Jane Stanley even reported Building 7's collapse minutes before the event actually happened. And you can even see Building 7 clearly behind her as she gives the report. Yesterday I watched a video where a news lady was talking and she said the third building just fell. But behind her, the third building had not fallen yet. So that's weird. Jane Stanley. Jane you Stanley. saw that then, yeah. Oh, of course, crazy. of course. Like she's like, oh, it fell down and it's still behind her. But you would think that she would wait till it fell, even if she had insider information that the thing was going down. She has uh, some sort of uh, ESP. There are currently close to 1,500 architects and engineers who are saying that it was indeed a controlled demolition. Well, I mean, that's the kind of thing where we need some sort of investigation, you know, and if the government isn't going to do this for investigating, then we need a third party to step in and, you know, have the authority and the resources to do that. I mean, like a lot of people, you know, question the Warren Commission. That doesn't make all of them kooks or conspiracy theorists. What do you feel about losing a lot of our civil liberties since 9-11? Uh, it sucks. You know, you have, you know, people that can invade your phone calls and text messages and emails, and so you really don't have any privacy. And that, that really scares me. You know, so I think that 9-11 was sort of uh, the Trojan horse for all that sort of policy to come in. If you notice there's free speech zones. We can only free speech in certain areas now. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's almost like everything that we once had is slowly shrinking. Is it worth it to make us more safe to lose our liberties? No, certainly not. I mean, you know, 9-11 was, uh, was a terrible event, but in terms of... The things that have happened since then making us more safe, I'd say that's the other side of the coin. Do you think there needs to be a new investigation into September 11th? I don't think it would hurt. I don't know how much we would know about it or, um, again, maybe how unbiased it would be, but I think it always is something that is interesting to look at further. I think America should demand a new investigation. Definitely be interesting to see things that I'm sure the government didn't want the public knowing at the time. The only way to get to the bottom of it is to do more research. I, I honestly believe the government's corrupt. Everyone lies. I don't think people should just put all their faith and trust in a government who is just completely selfish and only worrying about themselves. Ten years after 9-11, we could see that much of the public is aware that they're not being told everything there is to know about the tragic events of that day. The mainstream media, however, continues to avoid discussing Building 7. Instead, they insist on pushing the official fable and ridicule any American who demands a new investigation. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. Back to you, Alex. Thank you, Darren. Great job. Look. The great part about this being my news program, I'm the news director, I'm the head of InfoWars.com, is that I can just stop the news and make a comment. And I want to tell you a brief story here before we go to break and come back with Richard Gage. I have a friend who is high level at the Austin airport uh, in public relations. I'll just leave it at that. And uh, this was like four years ago. He was visiting his brother at a local TV station. And I was over there. And he, he came in and he said, he said, get, get the news on because it's about to air. And he goes, I guarantee you that I watched them interview 40 plus people and they were all against the newest uh, type, you know, abuse that the TSA was involved in taking your belt off, your shoes off, you know, being uh, patted down. That was before they went in the pants. And he said, everybody said they hated it and would rather face the danger or it was fake or 9-11 was an inside job. Everyone until one old woman, and this was News 8 Austin at the time. It's now your news now. It's a Time Warner uh, you know, local news thing. And he said one old lady said she loved it. And, they, and he knew because he was there with him. He said, that's a wrap. And they turned the camera off, slammed the tripod together. They were there for an hour trying to get people to talk to him. Every one of them hated it, and they found one woman to be politically correct who groveled for the police state. Now, we don't do that here. We, every week, sometimes twice a week, send out our reporters to do this man on the street. We're only, what, a, we've done five, six shows now. We've already done it three times. And we put almost everybody in there. If somebody's incoherent and can't string a sentence together, they're cut. The one person that we basically cut out of this was the guy 
uh, who was uh, incoherent uh, and, and, and said that he believed the official story. But I'm telling you, he, he believed it. It's just that he gibbered and had trouble talking. Some of the folks also that think it's an inside job were kind of long-winded, so we cut them out as well. But 15 people, one of them buys the official story. Now, again, they'd have to get 40-something to find one person who liked the police state. And that's proven. I think we're going to do some special reports where we show you unedited you know, other than cutting out the spaces while you know, new people walk up. Or maybe we'll just go to 6th Street and get a whole crowd around us and shoot like 30 minutes to, to show this. Or we'll go to UT and do it and get a big crowd around us and bring people up and just show you the good, the bad, the ugly. To prove this, it is a hoax that, that, that most people don't know that 9-11 is an inside job. Most people do. I've seen an Angus and Reed New York Times poll Five years ago, it's in several of my films, scientific, where 83% of Americans believe they're being lied to about 9-11. Countless others in the mid-60s saying inside job. You know, I've seen others where 37% think inside job. But now they're pushing all these polls that I've researched that are very questionable. They say 10%. Oh, that's far too high, they say. 15 people, only one is drinking the Kool-Aid. Incredible. And that's what you have to remember with this 10th anniversary coming up, is that the idea of false flag terror, inside job, self-inflicted wound, something that wasn't understood a decade ago. False flag was something that academics knew about. People that researched stage terror knew about. I knew the term false flag. But no one, I mean, 99.9 .9 didn't know this 10 years ago. When you ask yourself, have we been successful, ask somebody what an inside job is. Ask somebody what a false flag is. Ask somebody what a self-inflicted wound is. The vast majority now know. Just like Ron Paul 20 years ago in Congress couldn't get one co-sponsor to end the Fed or even audit it. Now it passed the House last year and was killed procedurally in the Senate. We are winning and Tokyo rose of the New World Order. Even when our troops were about to you know, uh, take over the, the, the homeland of Japan, they were broadcasting, you've lost GIs, you're all going to die, you're failing. Remember that guy in Baghdad, Baghdad Bob, his bombs are going up behind him going, the Americans are thousands of miles away, nothing's going on here. I mean, that's what they're doing here. They're going, no one believes 9-11's inside job. No one does, buddy boy. You need to go to sleep now. Huh? Government lied. No one believes that the government killed Kennedy. Believe the KGB. <laughs> but scientific polls, 92% know the government killed Kennedy. And now they've released the Jackie tape. She said the government killed him. Uh, his lawyer, Bar McClellan, LBJ's lawyer, has gone public. Uh, the hitman, head CIA guy, has gone public on his deathbed, E. Howard Hunt. Y you want me to keep going? The mistress of uh, LBJ went public on my show before she died. You want me to keep going? You guys have lost all credibility. We're going to go to break, come back with Richard Gage. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us and spread the word. The spirit of 1776 worldwide will defeat evil. The establishment called him extreme and unelectable. They said he was the wrong man for the job. It's why a young Texan named Ron Paul was one of only four congressmen to endorse Ronald Reagan's campaign for president, believing in Reagan's message of smaller government and lower taxes. After Reagan, Senator Al Gore ran for president, pledging to raise taxes and increase spending, pushing his liberal values. And Al Gore found a cheerleader in Texas named Rick Perry. Rick Perry helped lead Al Gore's campaign to undo the Reagan revolution, fighting to elect Al Gore president of the United States. Now, America must decide who to trust, Al Gore's Texas cheerleader or the one who stood with Reagan. Ron Paul, restore America now. Welcome back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. This will be the last television show I do before we reach the 10th anniversary of the tragic attacks of September 11th. Tragic attacks that have been used to go after the liberties and freedoms of people, not just here in the United States, but worldwide, to launch wars 
that have killed more than a million people in Iraq alone. A fable on which they have launched the TSA groping of the American people. Will Americans and the rest of the world allow the lie that is 9-11 to continue to be used to destroy free societies all over the planet and launch these wars? Joining us is Richard Gage. A few years ago, he founded Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. It's got thousands of members now, and it's made international headlines across the world. Hundreds of television programs uh, have uh, basically tried to debunk Mr. Gage and, of course, failed because he is a prominent architect, and he's got physicists, architects, engineers. It's over 1,500 now that are speaking out, and he's in Toronto for the truth hearing. So we're going to talk to him about that in a moment, and then I'm going to get his view on the video we just played earlier. You know, we interviewed more than 15 people in Austin randomly and asked, what do you think of Building 7, and showed them on an iPad the building falling. And all but one said, looks like controlled demolition, including a engineering student at UT who we ran into. Only one guy said, yeah, it looks suspicious, but there's got to be a reason. Now that's your real on the street polling. 15 people, all of them control demolition or say it looks suspicious. So joining us is somebody who is really at the tip of the spear when it comes to credibly challenging this fable. Richard, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. It's again my honor to be here with you. Well, you've got the floor. Tell us about uh, the latest developments, uh, where Architecture and Engineers is right now, uh, what these truth hearings are, uh, and uh, where you think 9-11 Truth is going 10 years on. Well, there, as you mentioned, um, I'm representing 1,500 architects and engineers, now 1,560 actually. And um, these are demanding a real investigation of the destruction of the three center high rises on 9-11. And um, the people in the street understand that Building 7 is a demolition. And I want to tell you also that every architect and engineer that I talk to, almost without exception, really, um, when they see Building 7, they agree it is a controlled demolition. And then they're just shocked. Their, their jaws are open. They're, they're receptive to hearing the evidence about the Twin Towers, which, of course, unfortunately, is, has, is replete with um, evidence, science-based forensic evidence uh, documenting its controlled demolition. So I've traveled all around the world now in 23 different countries, speaking to groups of 100 to 700, and uh, we're in Toronto, gathered by a group of very distinguished 9-11 um, researchers who have brought a distinguished panel of academicians uh, to hear the evidence over a four-day period where we are bringing uh, A to Z, you know, everything that has happened at uh, on 9-11 and around 9-11 for, for me, particularly uh, testifying as to the explosive demolition of these three high-rises. This will be available in documented form, uh, written and in film, and this will be presented to the governments of the Canada and the United States. And so we're, we're all proud to be here uh, together in one consolidated, uh, very academic uh, atmosphere uh, presenting this information. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, making sure that you get the, the DVD, Alex. And um, we have put out a new film, also called 9-11 Experts Speak Out. 9-11 explosive evidence experts speak out. So AE 9-11 Truth uh, is, has assembled 43 of our top petition signers, experts in their field, in high, we're talking about high-rise architects, um, uh, metallurgists, chemists, physicists, structural engineers, uh, assembled technical and building professionals, tops in their field, uh, for a, a new film that we have put together that uh, lays out these elements, not from, you know, Richard Gage uh, in seeming isolation, but, uh, the, but, but really uh, top people. And it's extraordinary. We had our premiere la the other night in, here in Toronto, and it went very well. And we're, we're, this is the pre-release edition. So I encourage people to take a look at it, give us feedback for our final edition at ae911truth.org.
we're very excited uh, about that, um, as well as the, D, the the video that you mentioned, uh, Alex, uh, the documentary on World Trade Center 7 with Ed Asner. Uh, it is uh, it has reached uh, 270,000 views in just three or four weeks. We're very excited about that as well, because it presents the evidence for World Trade Center 7 as much as you can fit in in a very melodramatic way. In other words, attention getting uh, in just uh, 15 minutes. So, well, um, Richard, I'm, I'm encouraging you to take a look. Richard, uh, again, this is a big deal. We went out on the streets of Austin and went up to 15 people randomly saying, who will talk to us? And showed them video of Building 7 falling. And all but one said, looks like a controlled demolition. Uh, and, and, and that's the same feedback I get from everybody. But that's not just the falling of 7. I'm going to go out next week and show people the Building 7 and then show the police on CNN saying, get back, we're going to bring that building down, it's coming down, and Larry Silverstein, the owner, saying it. You start adding all that and the blast points, the squibs, all of it. I mean, this is the greatest hoax in history. Is the hoax coming down? Because on the street, on radio, on foreign radio, all I get is people waking up. Uh, firefighters, police, they're not even invited as first responders because the government knows that they're angry and know the truth. We've confirmed that from the 9-11 uh, ceremonies uh, coming up uh, Sunday. And so what I want you in closing to speak about is, is, is your view. From my perspective, but you travel all over the world, the awakening's bigger than ever. But there's this new talking point by Slate, BBC, New York Times, just scores of publications that 9-11 truth is dead, nobody cares, we're discredited with no evidence. Uh, so they're basically uh, trying to sell this hoax idea, kind of like the idea that Ron Paul can't win when he's winning all the big polls, that, oh, you guys have been discredited when the opposite is happening. Yeah, that, that's my experience as well, it, it, Alex. It's, it can be a little disheartening to, to hear those comments. Uh, you know, it's like watching a swimming pool fill up. The, the, the love, in the five years, there's been a lot of rise in the level of responsiveness in the street uh, to the activists. And I'm out there with them in the street um, uh, fairly often. Um, and the, the, it's, it, five years ago, it was, you know, you get the middle finger and so forth um, and, and conspiracy theorists. Now, largely, most people are fairly receptive. It is, it is extraordinary. So we're gauging the level of unconscious, and it, it is not dead whatsoever. We're very excited about um, what, what, what's happening here, the, the level of support that we have in our organization in order to make a film like the one we're talking about and, and, and produce it and get it out there. Uh, it takes a lot of support, and we're getting that support. Um, so... There is no, there's no loss here. We're, there's only gain. We're, we're brought all around the world. Um, and and uh, today, uh, this week in Toronto, we're going to New York. Um, next week, we have a debate with uh, the physicist Dave Thomas and uh, uh, Dr. Mueller from UC Berkeley. Uh, this is going to be broadcast on every Pacifica station across the country. Well, there's five of them, but then 100 affiliates as well on September 11th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And um, during that, believe it or not, our premiere of this new movie, 9-11 Explosive Evidence, Expert Speak Out, is playing in New York um, at Old Souls Church in New York um, on uh, September 11th at 7 p.m. And then we also have uh, the Liberty Fest, which is an extraordinary We Are Change New York um, uh, event that has already pre-sold 400 tickets. So I'll be speaking there. To so a just another example uh, of the fact that you're constantly touring around the country and the world getting a huge response. And again, as a syndicated radio host, I can tell you 9-11 Truth is only growing faster. Uh, overall liberty is only intensifying. Now, uh, getting into some of the issues here in closing, Richard, uh, obviously, there's the Building What campaign in New York that's exposing Building 7. That's getting huge attention. Do you agree that out of all the smoking guns, the biggest one is Building 7? <laughs> yeah. You know why, Alex? Because a child can look at that building and know that it's being blown up. You can tell that child 
Do you know our government told us that a few small fires, well, they call them big, uh, brought this building down? Um, and nobody believes that. When people understand that we've been lied to and manipulated by NIST, well, I don't, it took them seven years to, to ultimately come out with this set of lies, while acknowledging that the building fell as fast as a bowling ball falling off the side of it, straight down, uniformly, almost into its own footprint, free fall and acceleration for a third of its six-second fall. Uh, this is absolutely extraordinary, and so uh, it's a hands-down win. I mean, my job is easy, and uh, I know you have similar sets of experiences with the range of issues that you expose. It's not difficult to tell the truth. They've got the hard job. They've got the uphill climb. We are coasting on the truth, and I am so glad to be alongside you in this uh, info war. Well, Richard, uh, God bless you and your hard work. Uh, in closing, I would just throw a story. At you. I talked to a firefighter student who's going to firefighting school, and they told him there's been changes to the manuals now. Uh, before, they said steel started weakening at about 2,200, 2,500 degrees, depending on the type of steel. Uh, and it started melting, depending on the type, at 3,000 or more. But they said now that they're changing things, 1,000 degrees, they're saying, will uh, we'll weaken and, and make a building fall in. So they're having to change insurance actuaries. Uh, this, the, the false science, false physics uh, that, that the government uh, has, has gone along with, uh, is is changing reality, uh, but only in fantasy land. We've seen countless big skyscraper fires in the 10 years since 9-11. None of them ever collapse. Uh, and and uh, still, it, it wouldn't be symmetrical. I mean, this is totally and utterly ridiculous. Your, your comment on that. Yeah, absolutely correct, Alex. Uh, we had not lost one skyscraper uh, from much hotter, much larger, and longer-lasting fires. And yet NIST didn't even examine the only other possibility for how these buildings are destroyed, and that is, is have been destroyed. It should have been the first, if not the only, hypothesis they looked at, but they didn't even examine it. It is a complete cover-up. Nor did they examine or acknowledge the pools of molten iron seen by the first responders, the structural engineers, the iron workers in the basements of the Twin Towers and the debris pile of Building 7, or these iron-rich microspheres, molten iron microspheres found in all the World Trade Center dust samples by the USGS, not by conspiracy theorists. This is documented or, by the USGS, as is uh, by... Uh -huh. Or the BBC reporting Building 7 had fallen because of fires in its own footprint 25 minutes before it happened, and later admitting Reuters gave them a script. They jumped the gun on that. Uh, or the police saying, get back, we've been told they're going to blow it up. I've talked to the officers, not just watch the news cams. Uh, and, and then the pro-official store people say, oh, you're saying cops blew it up. No, cops were compartmentalized, told, we're blowing it up, get back. So the cops were like, all right, they're blowing it up, get back. And I remember that day on the news, on the radio, they said, we're looking at blowing up Building 7 to protect other buildings. Then they blew it up and said, we didn't blow it up. Richard Gage, God bless you, and thank you for joining us. And I know that uh, a couple more anniversaries coming up here uh, that uh, we are going to uh, be able to clearly show uh, that 9-11 Truth uh, has uh, certainly, at least in the court of public opinion, exposed the true perpetrators. Thank you so much, sir. That's right, Alex. I'm with you on that one. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. All right, that's it for this special pre-9-11 10th anniversary edition uh, we appreciate Richard Gage joining us, the rest of the crew doing a great job this week. I'll be back on the radio live this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m., and then back Monday, 11 a.m., and back here Monday, 7 p.m., for InfoWars Nightly News. Richard's uh, Skype was a bit choppy, but the information cut through, and that's what's important. Please, if you're not a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv, support alternative media. Go to InfoWarsNews.com and check out the special reports section, the nightly news section, the daily radio slash TV section, my rants section at InfoWarsNews.com or PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, and if you uh, are a subscriber, think about purchasing another subscription and to give it to your friends and family because then you share the gift of information and awakening, but you also support our growing operation. We couldn't have done any of this without you. And as the French philosopher said, Victor Hugo, no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Or as V from V for Vendetta says, ideas are bulletproof. 
Be safe. Have a great weekend. And uh, we will see you again back here 7 p.m. next Monday. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the Info War. God bless you all.